Hey, Bart Miller here with Cycling Strong. I've got Dave from Plan 7 coaching here with me. And uh, most of you know, I am in love with this BMC bike. Now, I haven't done a ton of videos on it because if you know me, I love to test things out before I recommend them to everybody out there on the planet. So I got this. I've absolutely just gone crazy over this bike. And I brought it in and, and one of the things Dave even said, he picked it up and he goes, my gosh, this is really light, it feels great. But it is, this bike I can't recommend enough. It is absolutely amazing. But I came in because of two things. Did some cycle cross on it this year and I've rode a little bit of gravel on it. But now I'm transitioning into gravel and so I wanted Dave's opinion on, you know, I, I have a couple buddies that they're just like, well I do cycle cross on my bike and then I ride gravel on it and I thought, well, you know what? I'm gonna be on this thing for a few hours. Do I do my setup different? If so, what do you do differently? And how do you approach a bike like this that you're using for different types of events, obviously, and uh, that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna let Dave kind of take it away and talk about that for us. Sure. Uh, So this, it looks like a phenomenal bike and I can can see why you'd like it. The design is really tight. They've, They've beefed up the down tube um, really solid transition up front to make sure that torsionally it's super stiff with this kind of down tube and then the junction here um, it is not going to go anywhere but forward when you push down on the pedals and then it was just super light which for cyclocross um, is a key factor when you're on and off the bike you're trying to make heavy accelerations and you want that bike to just jump for you and and your consideration of okay so how, how uh, broad of use can I, can I make of this bike? Um, so overall, cyclocross bikes, uh, they work well as a road application even. Mm-hmm. The geometry is a little bit more relaxed. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're you're going to have a longer wheelbase for stability. Um, but, you know, a, a lot of folks use a cross bike as their road bike a lot of times. Um, a few of the concerns of like having a, a cross bike with your cross setup and transitioning it over to road or to a uh, gravel race where maybe there's not a lot of technical aspects to it. You may or may not be on or off the bike. Right. So, so we want to start thinking about those things. For cyclocross, mm-hmm. um, we're thinking about having to be nimble, get around technical corners, uh, getting on and off the bike, and then uh, figuring out how to be in the best position on essentially a road bike, Mm -hmm. but uh, handling technical terrain. And so one of the things that I would like as we're figuring out the best position for you, Mm -hmm. we're going to think, okay, cyclocross and, and, and you want to do gravel races. So uh, we're going to think about percentage of which, mm-hmm. you know, if, if this is more of a cross bike, then we're going to initially start out with a, a cross position. We're leading in a cross season, so we want you in a position for cross racing. We're going to be on the bike 45, 50 minutes, mm-hmm. and it's a super intense effort, technical terrain on and off the bike. Uh, so we're going to find a setup that works for you to handle technical terrain on the bike. Right. Which means we're going to be a little bit lower in the saddle. We might be a little bit more forward. And then we're going to have to figure out where you like to have your hands in technical terrain. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people like to roll in the drops almost the whole time. Keeps their center of body mass lower. Um, and, and it provides a really stable position for, for steering and handling. A lot of people like to be on the hoods. Mm-hmm. And, and they'll spend 80% of the time of the race on the hoods. So we, we want to figure out where you like to have your hands. And then we decide optimal bar height. Um, right now, I'm not super psyched about rotation of your handlebars. Mm-hmm. And so that would be one of the first places we start as we're considering height. And we're going, to, we're going to put the handlebars into a neutral position, which would mean we would roll them a lot more forward, and then we're going to find a new home for the hoods right. based on that. Um, and again, I'm going to have you think about cross racing 
and think about where you feel the most confident, if it's mm -hmm. on the hoods or in the drops. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to look at your overall bike fit. We'll, we'll take some cues from the road fit right. and start to apply them to the cross bike. And then we'll decide how high we want the handlebars. Gotcha. So that would be where we're determining if we need a different stem, right. where, we, where we're gonna place it on the steer tube. And, and then get you out on some dirt and right. on some technical terrain and see if it, if it feels balanced and see if where you thought you wanted your hands, if that's really where you feel the most control. Right. Um, and as a quick segue over to uh, gravel racing, mm -hmm. so maybe you are not off the bike at all. Right. Uh, and the biggest thing is most of those are, you're going to be on the bike for four to seven hours. Right. And exactly. it's, it's a lot different than a super high intensity 45 minute effort. And so when we start making that consideration, we probably want your position a lot more similar to your road position. Gotcha. And, and depending on how your feet do on a mountain bike shoe and pedal yeah. setup yeah. versus a road bike shoe and pedal setup, like if, you, if it's something like Rebecca's Private Idaho right. or, um, or the Crusher, mm -hmm. there is potential that you might be off the bike, mm -hmm. but it's a lot lower than in a cross race right. or, or in something where it, you've got more technical terrain to handle. And, and so you may want to consider using your road pedals and shoes mm -hmm. just because they provide a little bit bigger platform mm -hmm. to stand on mm -hmm. and it's going to take some of that isolated pressure uh, off of your foot. Yeah. Um, but the bigger factor is thinking about what your comfort level is going to be when you're on the bike for four to seven hours. Sure. And, and that's where we spend a ton of time on the road bike Yep. And you're used to spending big hours on that road bike and it's an optimized setup for speed. Yep. And so that, that would be kind of the first consideration is, okay, how do we set this up to look like the road position? Yeah. And again, for something like Crusher, you've got a really difficult descent yep. that's high speed. It's not necessarily technical, it's just really high speed and unstable. And so you're going to want to feel comfortable in the drops where you've got the best leverage, where you can get on the brakes the mm -hmm. easiest mm -hmm. with the most power. Um, and so we want to make sure that that, that that feels good. But we also don't want you to have you so hunched over like right. your road position right. that when you're having to come back up that yeah. long descent, when it's really steep and, you're tr and if you're too far down, the leverage point might get to right. be uncomfortable. Gotcha. Uh, one of the other considerations when we're cross-applying the one piece of equipment, uh, we talked about how uh, a lot of cyclocross equipment is moving to a 1x10 mm -hmm. or 1x11 setup, mm -hmm. so one chain ring up front. And, and they've moved a lot that direction with mountain bike as well. Yep. And, You've got a fairly good crossover of gearing when you're looking at what you have on a mountain bike. Uh, you know, you can change your, your front chain ring yep. depending on the terrain that you're, yep. that you're headed out to. Yep. Um, and your low, your low end and your high end are reasonably comparable to what you're getting with a, a two by 10 or a two by nine setup. Yep. Uh, However, when we get to the needs for higher gearing, mm -hmm. so in a gravel application versus a cyclocross application, mm -hmm. you know, we're at, on cyclocross, um, you can go pretty fast, yeah. but there's a lot of transition points of speed. Um, and so the one by setup is, is really nice because there's not a one more piece of equipment to get gunked up with yeah, mud. Exactly. Um, it makes the bike lighter. Yeah. Uh, you know, the front derailleur can be the first thing to get blown apart when it gets packed up with mud. And with the one chain ring set up up front, you've got nothing there to, to have complication. Right. However, your high end gearing is compromised yep. Yep. as well as 
you know, maybe you go with a, a bigger front chain ring, yeah. but now all of a sudden your low range right. is compromised. Right. And so when you start to think, okay, how fast am I potentially going to be pedaling yeah. in Crusher? Or how fast am I going to potentially be pedaling at Rebecca's Private Idaho? Yeah. Um, and, and so you're going to want to really think about speed. Uh, you know, if you've got some downhills where you could spin out really quickly, mm -hmm. and then you're going to get dropped from the group you're in, yeah. um, that, that's definitely a big consideration. Yeah. Uh, where, you know, this setup right now is really optimized for cyclocross. Right. Uh, where you've got kind of that medium range. Because mm -hmm. there's not a lot of times when, when you're going to run out of gear and get dropped from a group in a cross race right. because you didn't have a high enough gear. Right. But in, in, a, in a race that combines pavement, dirt, gravel, right. you, know, you may have some flat Possibly sections where so. you just don't have enough high-end gear. Right. And then climbing back up that 15%, right. uh, you may not have an easy enough gear. Right. And so that's where having a two-by setup up front is is a little bit um, easier to work with right? Um, when, when you're making kind of that cross application. Gotcha, good. So I think a few highlights is, is that if you're gonna pull your cross bike out and do gravel rides, you may wanna look at your overall setup and check your road bike setup a little bit more is what I'm gathering. Yeah. And if you're gonna uh, do, if you got this set up for gravel rides and long distance rides, and you're gonna start doing some um, you know, cross racing, you may want to look at your setup and maybe lower your saddle or a few things that way. Yeah, to there, there's some different wise. different positioning issues. Would and you say then, that's closer to a mountain bike, or would you just kind of say it's, it is what it is for itself? It's kind of unique. Okay. Cyclocross setup. Your saddle height and setback would be more similar to what your mountain is. Yeah. You need the saddle a little bit out of the way. Right. On the mountain bike, it's great because they're starting to make really lightweight dropper Droppers, posts. Right. Um, I've, I could see some good applications for a dropper post on a cross bike right. if you were, if you had highly, highly technical terrain, right. um, it does add weight, yeah, but, sure. um, it, it would kind of be just a luxury right. on a cross bike per se. But, um, so with the mountain bike saddle height where you're trying to like keep yourself low, yeah. but still get the right leg extension. You would you would want to just have some of that comfort level. And then I guess the other thing is is the takeaways are make sure your front of your bike is set up the way you feel comfortable in extreme terrain, uh, technical terrain, and if you're doing a lot of downhills on gravel. Gravel is different feel. It's a different flow than when you're on a road bike. Even though you have a road bike setup, doesn't mean you would be comfortable on your road bike on gravel. And I know a lot of guys that aren't. Me personally, I've rode enough on it and on you know little things like that. It doesn't bother me as much. I don't mind the slide. I don't mind that kind of stuff. So for yourself, you need to go out and actually get your bike set up. And like Dave mentioned it previously, go ride it on some real dirt. Yeah, spend and, some time out there. Yeah. Because the way, that, the way that a bike like this is set up yeah. is set up purposely with a longer wheelbase, right. more slack angles to be more predictable Right. And, and more stable. Yeah, so test, test it out, then you'll, then you'll really know, and then dial your fit in. Once again, the best fit expert in, I've ever heard or been around is Dave, and he still always says, go out there, ride it, and if you have any problems, let me know. I mean, they, they can't predict your body. Your body is unique to you, so as much as they want to dial it in, they still need you to go out, ride the bike, and you know, most of the time you're good. And then provide feedback, right. because exactly. like one simple piece of information that you right. give me from out on the road or yep. out on the dirt, yep. I can think about how we set you up, and, and it could be as simple as, oh, well, we need the saddle right. a few millimeters forward, exactly. or the height, it sounds like we did our, the saddle height just a hair too high. Right. So there's, there's sometimes just small little tweaks that can make, a huge difference. make all the difference. Cool. So with that, we'll wrap up. Um, go out there, have fun riding your bike, enjoy it. Uh, Plan7coaching.com. Check out Dave and what his team is doing here. I think they're uh, very innovative in the way that they're bringing nutrition. Uh, they're bringing the way that they train you. I mean, all sorts of things that uh, a lot of coaches don't do all into one package for amazing athletes. So check their stuff out and uh, make any comments below the video you want answers for. 
and we'll be talking to you soon. Get out there, keep riding your bike.